Today is the 19th of June, 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship together. You know how yesterday I said it was nice and sunny? Well, it's back. The grey clouds are back. It just seems to be that the UK is in the midst of a really deep depression. Before we say, we normally keep the prayers for the end of it, but if we can please pray for the folks in Lincolnshire who've been having some, particular parts of Lincolnshire that have been having some flooding as a result of all the rain we've had, um, I would just really, really appreciate it. Thank you very much. But if you're joining us for the first time, again, you haven't joined me for a weather forecast, you've, you've come to hear scripture. And let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of prayer, scripture, and music. So let's begin today's episode of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. Let's pray, shall we? Lord of life, of love, of peace, of time itself, we stand in awe of your eternal presence and resurrection power. We open our lives once again to your involvement. Come, Lord Jesus. As you sit in heaven, be seated here on the throne of our hearts. Forgive us our sin and enter in. We ask this in your name. Amen. We're going to have our first piece of music just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God. And then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in our Bible readings today, we read that Paul goes to war and Paul sends his greetings to the church in Rome. We'll see you on the other side. Let's pray that God speaks to us through the scriptures this morning. Lord, prepare our hearts and open our minds, we pray. And give us a teachable spirit that is receptive to all that you would have us learn today. Open our ears to hear your voice speaking to us. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the contemporary English version. We're beginning today with 1 Samuel 14. And Saul was in Geba with the six hundred men. Saul's own tent was set up under a fruit tree by the threshing place at the edge of the town. Ahijah was serving as priests, and one of his job was to get answers from the Lord for Saul. 
Ahijah's father, was Ahitab, and his father's brother was Ichabod. Ahijah's grandfather was Phinehas, and his great-grandfather Eli had been the Lord's priest at Shiloh. One day, Jonathan told the soldier who carried his weapons that he wanted to attack the Philistine camp on the other side of the valley. So they slipped out of the Israelite camp without anyone knowing it. Jonathan didn't even tell his father he was leaving. Jonathan decided to get to the Philistine camp by going through the pass that led between Shiny Cliff and Michmash to the north, and Thornbush Cliff and Geba to the south. Jonathan and the soldier who carried his weapons talked as they went towards the Philistine camp. It's just the two of us against all those godless men, Jonathan said. But the Lord can help a few soldiers win a battle just as easily as he can help a whole army. Maybe the Lord will help us win this army. Do whatever you want, the soldier answered. I'll be right there with you. This is what we'll do, Jonathan said. We will go across and let them see us. If they agree to come down the hill and fight where we are, then we won't climb up to their camp. But we will go if they tell us to come up the hill and fight. That means the Lord is going to help us win. Jonathan and the soldier stood at the bottom of the hill where the Philistines could see them. The Philistines said, Look, those worthless Israelites have crawled out the holes where they've been hiding. Then they yelled down to Jonathan the soldier, Come up here and we will teach you a thing or two. Jonathan turned to the soldier and said, Follow me. The Lord is going to let us win. Jonathan crawled up the hillside with the soldier right behind him. When they got to the top, Jonathan killed the Philistines who attacked from the front, and the soldier killed those who attacked from behind. Before they'd gone a hundred feet, they'd killed twenty Philistines. The whole Philistine army panicked, those in the camp, those on guard duty, those in the fields, and those on raiding patrols. All of them were afraid and confused. Then God sent an earthquake, and the ground began to tremble. Saul's lookouts at Geba saw the Philistine army was running in every direction like mounted wax. Saul told his officers, Call the roll call, and find out who has left our camp. When they'd finished, they found out that Jonathan and the soldiers who carried his weapons were missing. At that time, Ahijah was serving as priest for the army of Israel, and Saul told him, Come over here. Let's ask God what we should do. Just as Saul finished saying this, he could see that the Philistine army was getting more and more confused, and he said, Ahijah, never mind. Saul quickly called his army together, then led them to the Philistine camp. By this time, the Philistines were so confused that they were killing each other. There were also some hired soldiers in the Philistines' camp who now switched to Israel's side and fought for Saul and Jonathan. Many Israelites had been hiding in the hill country of Ephraim, and when they heard that the Philistines were running away, they came out of hiding and joined in chasing the Philistines. So the Lord helped Israel win the battle that day. Saul had said earlier to his soldiers, I want to get even with those Philistines by sunset. If any of you eat before then, you will be under a curse. So he made them swear not to eat. By the time the fighting moved past Beth Avon, the Israelite troops were weak from hunger. The army and the people who lived nearby had gone into a forest, and they came to a place where honey was dripping on the ground. But no one ate any of it because they were afraid of being put under the curse. Jonathan did not know Saul's warning to the soldiers, so he dipped the end of his walking stick in the honey and ate some with his fingers. He felt stronger and more alert. Then a soldier told him, Your father swore that anyone who ate food today would be put under a curse, and we agreed not to eat. That's why we are so weak. Jonathan said, My father has caused you a lot of trouble. Look at me. I had only a little of this honey, but already I feel strong and alert. I wish you'd eaten some of the food the Philistines left behind. We would have been able to kill a lot more of them. By the evening, the Israelite army was exhausted from killing Philistines all the way from Michmash to Aijalon. They grabbed the food they'd captured from the Philistines and started eating. They even killed sheep and cows and calves right on the ground and ate the meat without draining the blood. Someone told Saul, Look, the army is disobeying the Lord by eating meat before the blood drains out. You're right, Saul answered. They're being unfaithful to the Lord. Hurry, roll a big rock over here, then tell everyone in the camp to bring their cattle and lambs to me. They can kill the animals on this rock and then eat the meat. That way no one will disobey the Lord by eating the meat with blood still in it. 
That night, the soldiers brought their cattle over to the big rock and killed them there. It was the first altar Saul had built for the offerings to the Lord. Saul said, Let's attack the Philistines again while it's still dark. We can fight them all night. Let's kill them and take everything they own. The people answered, We will do whatever you want. Wait, Ahijah the priest said, Let's ask God what we should do. Saul asked God, Should I attack the Philistines? Will you help us win? This time, God did not answer. Saul called his army officers together and said, We have to find out what sin has kept God from answering. I swear by the living Lord that whoever sinned must die, even if it turns out to be my own son Jonathan. No one said a word. Saul told his army, You stand on that side of the priest, and Jonathan and I will stand on the other side. Everyone agreed. Then Saul prayed, Our Lord God of Israel, why haven't you answered me today? Please show us who sinned. Was it my son Jonathan, or I, or was it your people Israel? The answer came back that Jonathan and Saul had sinned, not the army. Saul told Ahijah, Now ask the Lord to decide between Jonathan and me. The answer came back that Jonathan had sinned. Jonathan, Saul exclaimed, Tell me what you did. I dipped the end of my walking stick in some honey and ate a little. Now you say that I have to die? Yes, Jonathan, I swear to God that you must die. No, the soldiers shouted. God helped Jonathan win the battle for us. We won't let you kill him. We swear to the Lord that we won't let you kill him or even lay a hand in him. So the army kept Saul from killing Jonathan. Saul stopped hunting down the Philistines and they went home. When Saul became king, the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, the kings of Zobah, the Philistines and the Amalekites had all been robbing the Israelites. Saul fought back against these enemies and stopped them from robbing Israel. He was a brave commander and always won his battles. Saul's wife was Ahinoam, the daughter of Ahimaz. They had three sons, Jonathan, Ishvi, and Malchishua. They had two daughters. The older one was Merib, and the younger one was Michal. Abner, Saul's cousin, was the commander of the army. Saul's father Kish and Abner's father Ner were sons of Abiel. Saul was at war with the Philistines for as long as he lived. Whenever he found a good warrior or a brave man, Saul made him join his army. Romans 16 I have good things to say about Phoebe, who is a leader in the church at Chentrea. Welcome her in a way that is proper for someone who has faith in the Lord and is one of God's own people. Help her in any way you can. After all, she has proved to be a respectful leader for many others, including me. Give my greetings to Priscilla and Aquila. They have not only served Christ Jesus together with me, but they have even risked their lives for me. I am grateful for them, and so are all the Gentile churches. Greet the church that meets in their name. Greet my dear friend Aponetus, who was the first person in Asia to have faith in Christ. Greet Mary, who has worked so hard for you. Greet my relatives Andronicus and Junius, who were in jail with me. They are highly respected by the apostles and were followers of Christ before I was. Greet Ampelitus, my dear friend whose faith is in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, who serves Christ along with us. Greet my dear friend Stachus. Greet Apollos, a faithful servant of Christ. Greet Aristobulus and his family. Greet Herodian, who is a relative of mine. Greet Narcissus and the others of his family who have faith in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Trifosa, who work hard for the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, she also works hard for the Lord. Greet Rufus, the special servant of the Lord, and greet his mother, who has been like a mother to me. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, and Hermas, as well as our friends who are with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all of God's people who are with them. Be sure to give each other a warm greeting. All of Christ's churches greet you. My friends, I beg you to watch out for anyone who causes trouble and divides the church by refusing to do what all of you were taught. Stay away from them. They want to serve themselves and not Christ the Lord, 
Their flattery and fancy talk fool people who don't know any better. I am glad that everyone knows how you will obey the Lord. But still, I want you to understand what is good and not have anything to do with evil. Then God who gives peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. I pray that our Lord Jesus will be kind to you. Timothy, who works with me, sends his greetings, and so do my relatives Lucius, Jason, and Sospita. I, Tertius, also send my greetings. I am the follower of the Lord, and I wrote this letter. Gaius welcomes me and the whole church into his home, and he sends his greetings. Erastus, the city treasurer, and our dear friend Cortus send their greetings too. Praise God! He can make you strong by means of my good news, which is the message about Jesus Christ. For ages and ages this message was kept secret, but now at last it has been told. The eternal God commanded his prophets to write about the good news, so that all nations would obey and have faith. And now, because of Jesus Christ, we can praise the only wise God forever. Amen. Psalm 40 A Psalm by David for the Music Leader I patiently waited, Lord, for you to hear my prayer. You listened and pulled me from a lonely pit full of mud and mire. You let me stand on a rock with my feet firm, and you gave me a new song, a song of praise to you. Many will see this, and they will honor and trust you, the Lord God. You bless all of those who trust you, Lord, and refuse to worship idols or follow false gods. You, Lord God, have done many wonderful things, and you've planned marvelous things for us. No one is like you. I would never be able to tell all you have done. Sacrifices and offerings are not what pleases you. Gifts and payments for sin are not what you demand. But you made me willing to listen and obey. And so I said, I am here to do what is written about me in this book, where it says, I enjoy pleasing you. Your law is in my heart. When your people worshipped, you knew I told them, Our Lord always helps. When all your people met, I did not keep silent. I said, Our Lord is kind, He is faithful and caring, and He saves us. You, Lord, never fail to have pity on me. Your love and faithfulness always keep me secure. I have more troubles than I can count. My sins are all around me, and I cannot find my way. My sins outnumber the hairs on my head, and I feel weak. Please show me that you care and come to my rescue. Hurry and help me. Disappoint and confuse all who want me dead. Turn away and disgrace all who want to hurt me. Embrace and shame all of those who say, Just look at you now. Our Lord, let your worshippers rejoice and be glad. They love you for saving them, so let them always say, The Lord is wonderful. I am poor and needy, but Lord God, you care about me and you come to my rescue. Please hurry and help. We're going to have some more music just to give us some time to focus on the bits of scripture that have come to our attention. And after the music, we'll say our prayers for the day and the time of the year.
Just a reminder, before we say our prayers for the day and the time of the year, that if you'd like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through the usual channels, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, that sort of thing. Check the show notes for all the contact details, and there are links to most of the contact details. And if you click it, it'll take you through. But let's pray, shall we? Lord, it's Wednesday already. Half the week gone, and what have I got to show for it? Time seems to pass so quickly, Lord. So please help me today to get my priorities right, to make the most of each hour, to enjoy each moment, and then at the end of the day, to say thank you, Lord. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. We've heard your glorious whisper, Lord, almost silent yet insistent, breaking through the chatter of many voices, the clatter of background noises, the wind, the rain, storm and hurricane. Through all of this, your voice remains unchangeable, cuts through to heart and soul, unmissable. Come follow me. Pick up the cross. My burden is no burden at all. It is simply love poured out for you and through you. Sustaining. Empowering. Come follow me. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.